So did today feel like it was going in slow motion? <laughs> Hi folks, I'm John Zadar and this is On Top and Hot and it is Slow Motion Tuesday, August 15th. Oh my God, what a slow market. It was difficult sitting here all day. You know, even Bloomberg brought that up today. They said all the markets on a whole are operating with less than 20% of their normal volume. So it's not just an OTC thing. It is an everywhere thing right now. Now in this show, we like to focus in on the OTC stocks, but penny stocks too. What's the difference? Well, penny stock is any stock under five bucks and you can find those on all markets. And we're looking for the ones that have potential to make us money. Now, I could do my research like everybody else, go rummaging around through filings and news presses, trying to figure out which piece of news is going to run. Well, you know what I've learned? Even the biggest news can fall flat on its face if the charts are cold. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think people look for chart setups. They look for a lot of volume coming in or these long running surges. They're looking for heat in the charts. So that's where I do my research. And when I find a chart that has heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst to either keep the chart moving or one to get it going. Well, I go out every day looking for stocks to share with you. And I've got some to share with you today, all based on their charts. First one we are going to take a look at here is KBNT, Kubient Inc. She is under the radar, but her chart is exciting. She had a breakout when she had big news come out on May 24th and she ran like 300% from 50 cents up to $1.50 and then she came back down. Well, she is now breaking out again with one of those atypical breakout charts and I am using the information we got from the first breakout. Now, we haven't had any more news since May 24th. I know that's a long time ago, but that's the thing. The news needs a follow-up. They need to close this deal. And the way the chart's been moving for the last seven, eight days, it looks like somebody knows something because it's climbing and breaking out already. So KBNT, Kubient Inc., she finished today at 81.3 cents, and she did a little more than 13% gains. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, you get benefits with that. Trading these major exchange penny stocks, they don't cost you anything. You got to pay to get in and get out on the OTC market. You can trade them pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. Now, don't think you need any special permissions or training to be able to trade after-market, pre-market. You don't. Just own the stock or try to buy the stock. The only thing you got to remember to make it work is remember to change the time period for your order. Most orders are set up for a day trade. It says day. We'll put day plus extended hours, EXT, or GTC, good till canceled, plus extended hours. Just get extended hours in there and your trade will be recognized and most likely go through. So what does KBNT do? They don't give us any information here, but you know I know where to get it in their most recent press release. Don't go to an old one, things are always changing. They tell us here that Kumint is a technology company with a mission to transform the digital advertising industry to audience-based marketing. Kubian's next generation cloud-based infrastructure enables efficient marketplace liquidity for buyers and sellers of digital advertising. The Kubian Audience Marketplace is a flexible, open marketplace for advertisers and publishers to reach and monetize and connect to their audiences. The company's platform provides a transparent, programmatic environment with proprietary artificial intelligence. The Audience Marketplace is the solution for brands and publishers that demand transparency and the ability to reach audiences across all channels and ad formats. Now, from what I've been able to gather, they're talking about screens out in the public, not these little screens in front of us. You know, like when you go to New York or Japan and you go to their big cities, you see these humongous screens up on buildings. It seems to me that's what they're talking about when they say audience marketplace. So what was the relative volume around the company today? 
All right, she's had a bit of increase, maybe 30%. She's jumped from 202,000 up to 284,000. As I said, she is under the radar, but the stock is climbing right now. She has already broken out and looks like she's gonna continue. And there's a lot of potential sitting on the table. Share structure for KBNT. Don't know what the float is, but it's not gonna be very high. Outstanding share count is only 14.7 million. Float is never higher than the outstanding share count, and it could be considerably less. So the absolute most we're gonna see in the float is 14.7 million, which is okay. Financials for KBNT. All right, they have been doing about two to three million each year. We know it's millions because we've got to add these three zeros to any of the numbers down here. Now what's most interesting here is that they don't pay anything for their revenues. Nothing, because they're not packaging anything. They're not manufacturing anything. They're selling advertising online. It's a digital product. Looking at the quarterly, oh, they have fallen. Wow, going from 1.2 million all the way down to $11,000. Still, they're not paying for anything, but they haven't got a lot to pay for right now which is why the news is exciting because it is a deal with another company that has got a lot to offer them. Disclosures for Kubiant, uh, just an 8K that came out on uh, June 12th and that really hasn't got anything to do with what we need to be looking at. So let's take a look at that news. Now there's only one piece of news to consider. All the rest is about their financials. This one came out on the 24th of May. Kubian today announced they have entered into a definitive merger agreement pursuant to which a dominee will merge with and into a wholly owned subsidiary of Kubian. The combined company will focus on growing and developing a dominee's pre-existing programmatic advertising service and platform that delivers high impact advertising campaigns via almost three quarter million connected digital out of home screens across the world. Following the closing of the merger, the combined company is expected to operate under the name of Adomni Inc. Adomni is also supposed to expand its product offering with enhanced features around the artificial intelligence technology they call Kubiance AI, or KAI for short. Or maybe it's Kai for short, or K, I don't know. Kubiant will acquire 100% of Adomni, and as I said, they're gonna be changing their name to Adomni. The merger has been unanimously approved by the board of directors of each company and is expected to close in the second half of 2023. We are smack dab in the middle of that right now. And as I said, there's no more filings. There's no more news. There's no information. But about 8, 10 days ago, this stock started moving, broke out over that 200, and it has been steady climbing. And it is in position to grab a lot of gains that it set up for itself from the last big bounce. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's take a look at Kubiant. We're going to do the charting for her on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at ticker KBNT. This is a six month, four hour chart. We've got a high bubble back here in February of $2.08. And then we've got a low bubble of 33 cents. That came halfway through May. That is a 700% difference right there. Now I have no clue what caused this bounce back here. There's just not enough information to see. And she jumped from about 76 cents up to $2.10, almost 300% run there. Coming down to that low bubble, a week after that came the news about the merger. She jumped from 50 cents up to $1.50, 300% run. But just like this one, she came down very quickly. And now, I'm not quite sure why, she had a bounce of volume come in about five days ago. There's no news, there's no filings. That broke it out from underneath all the SMAs to on top of the 200 and she did not even retreat. She fell a little bit, but she has now been climbing for the last five days with no catalyst in view. I don't know why she's moving. Somebody knows something, we don't know who, we don't know what, but the chart is telling us something is building up right now. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my Fibonacci because this shows us our potential. I'm gonna poke the bottom of this surge here and the top of that surge. 
Now this is going to show us algorithmic supports and resistances. So we don't have to go looking at historical price points to find them. These will work. The price will respect them and we can use them to trade with. As you can see, when she fell down underneath the 50% mark, the halfway point, she has a tendency to fall deep. If she falls from the high down to the 50% and stays above it, right near it, chances are she won't fall, she'll start to climb. It's not a guarantee, but it's a stronger likelihood. But you come underneath, it works the same way. It's a stronger likelihood you're going to fall. Well, she came all the way down to this bottom one, right down here. She's been bouncing across that a few times. Here's that breakout over the 200, which also put her above the next resistance, which has now become a support. She just went through it, and she is now climbing again, stair-stepping her way right up to these. And I think she, that's exactly what's going to happen. And when the news comes out, any progress, what we need to see right now is the S4. That's the final piece to the puzzle. Once the S4 is filed, that's it. It's a done deal. And that's what we are waiting for. And they did mention that. That's what they're working on right now. So that could come out at any time. And when it does, this is set up perfectly for a rip. Now we don't have any volume, but she is still climbing nice and steady. And as you can see by our oscillators, it's strong climbing. Our PPO has been pushing for five days up. As our MACD has, that's crossed the signal line, and our RSI has been bouncing, hitting its head on the ceiling here, just trying to get into the overbought. Everything is looking nice. 20-day, one-hour view. So here's that bottom. She came down, bounced off it, just broke through it one time, came back up. I'm not worried about that wick coming through it. To me, it's like a staple. It's like a pillar. It's supporting its growth that is going to do. And that's all it did. It went sideways after everything got stable. One last bounce and boy, she was off. She's put herself up here and she is climbing nice and steady. Actually ended the day on a high. I want to see this on the smaller time frame. See if she pulled back. We can see now a little closer. There's a little bit of volume in these last few days with hardly anything at all the days before. Why are people interested in it now? Osculators. Well, I like this. Our PPO is going up. That's our percentage price oscillator. And my ADX, which I purposely put underneath my PPO, is falling. The ADX, this tells me about my trend. A straight line tells you your trend hasn't changed. As soon as that line changes, it doesn't matter what direction. As long as it's not going straight anymore, it means your trend has changed. So every time my trend changes, the line's direction changes. And as long as this keeps falling and this one keeps going up, I know because it's a pattern I look for, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. And that's what's going on right now. MACD is pushing away and climbing, and she's been in the overbought, the RSI, and she's trying to tap it again. Hot energy. Let's look at our five-day, five-minute. Oh, that's sweet looking, isn't it? She was underneath the 200 down here on a low of 45 cents, shot right through that 200, all the way up, came down right up underneath this strong resistance, floated underneath it. You could see it was a magnet. She was stuck to it and then creeped across it. And once she got over it, she was excited. She jumped and now she's riding her 50 day SMA. I stand corrected. She's pushed off her 50 and she's riding on her 20. We can see a couple peg legs here that she throws down to steady herself. Just throw them down to that strong SMA like support so we can keep ourselves balanced. And it looks like I got to come down to the one minute. Did that not pull back? Nope. nope. Normally when you have a high bubble, it's like hitting your head on the ceiling. Very first thing you do is pull your head back. And that's normally what you see on a high bubble, a pullback. Now what price did we stop here at? 80 and we were at 81.99. All right. We had a little itty bitty tiny pullback so she could easily just take off tomorrow. What do our oscillators say? Well, I don't like the one minute. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's come on back down to that five day. All right, better. Our PPO is pushing up gradually. Our MACD is on top. It's actually whittling down right now, but everything is okay. And our RSI is its coolest it's been on any of the charts. It's at 56 right now. But you can see, 
That is a uptrending chart. And she has already broke out. And she has a lot of potential with these algorithms. She is down here at the bottom working her way up. And the gains, well, we are now at what? 80 cents. The next one here is at 85, 99, $1.10. Which one is that? That is the one above 50%. So I would look for it to break 98. That is where I would think she would be pushing for right now, trying to get to the halfway point. It's a very strong algorithm. The middle of anything is a perfect average. So it's a strong algorithm. So I would expect this to push up to, one more time, 98, just about 98. So when she gets there, she may fight. She may start to dip a little bit. She'll have to hit her head on that a couple of times and get up on top of it. And then we could see some more strength. KBNT, look for the S4, watch for the volume. She could pop. She's got a decent float. We got another stock from the NASDAQ and surprisingly, it's a biotech, it's a pharmacy. This is I2 Biopharma, ticker AYTU. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I kind of avoid talking about biotechs and pharmacies. Not because they're not making money. On the contrary, every single day I am posting news about biotechs that are running. But most of those biotechs are in research and development. They're going through phase trials. I don't see anything like that here. This company's got approved drugs. They're making money. They got very strong revenues. Now, the reason I found her was because of the chart. Oh, the chart is brilliant. It is a perfect atypical breakout chart, and it doesn't look like it's going to need any work to break out. And I've already got my directional intentional spike piercing that 200. So to me, it looks perfect. Now, catalyst wise, they don't have a direct catalyst. That is to say, there's not been any filings or news today or yesterday. But in the last couple of weeks, we've had two nice pieces of news that are juicy. And I think they've got enough to get this stock moving. So AYTU, she finished today at $1.87 with just about 7.5% gains. Now, they tell us a little bit about what they do down here. They have a lot of different drugs, and we're not going to go through all of them. But I'm going to share with you what they wanted to share with you. The company currently markets Natesto, the only FDA-approved nasally administered testosterone, which is indicated for the treatment of hypogonadism. I have never heard of that in my whole life. Outside the U.S., I2 also markets the company's proprietary myoaccess system. This helps diagnose male infertility. This has been approved in Canada and is being sold in over 20 countries around the world. They have another FDA approved drug called Prostaskint. This is a radio imaging agent that helps assess staging prostate cancer. And the last thing they tell us here, I2 also acquired the wholly owned subsidiary Newell Inc. This is a personal health and wellness company focused on women's sexual well-being and intimacy. And they market a product called Fiera, a personal care device for women that is scientifically proven to enhance physical arousal and sexual desire. All right, personal care, sexual arousal. Doesn't sound like a medicine, sounds more like a toy. But in either case, you know what the company's involved with. And we're going to get more when we look at their news. Taking a look at the volume, well, she dropped just a little bit today. Not even worth mentioning. She's normally doing 28,300 shares. Today, she did 27,950 shares. Just a little drop. Definitely under the radar. Share structure for the company. You're going to love this. It is a super low float. Not just under 10 million, under 5 million. And that's for the outstanding share count as well. Outstanding share count is at 3.7 million. And without knowing what the float is, I can guarantee you it is a super low float. Checking out the financials for I2 Biopharma. Look at that, folks. This is no R&D company. Their revenues have been growing every single year since 2019, jumping from 7.3 million. Don't forget those three zeros up here. We got to put behind any of the numbers on any of these charts to 27 million to 65 million to 96 million. <laughs> 
you can see they are running very quickly and their profit margin is growing strong looking at the quarterly all right they had a little bit of dip here coming down from 26 million down to 22 million and if i remember correctly they have not come out with their financials yet they are due right now taking a look at the company's disclosures we do have one that just came out today it's an 8k material change form this one informs us that they're making some changes to the management then we've got another 8k that came out the very last day of last month and this one correlates to the news we're going to look at now i am back here to the beginning of june when they did a public offering for four million dollars and it happened quick they started it on june 9th and by june 13th it was done they got their four million dollars they have some cash now think about this we've already got a very low float what was it before they put this public offering on the market i don't know now the other two pieces of news we are going to jump into one came out on the last day of july and one came out on the 8th of august the one that came out on the last day of July says that I2 Biopharma announces exclusive agreement with Madomi Pharma to commercialize Adenzis and Cotempla in Israel and Palestinian Authority. After the completion of local regulatory approvals, I2 anticipates exporting to Madomi both of its novel orally disintegrating extended release tablets for the treatment of ADHD. So they've got a product for ADHD as well. Now, I don't know if that's approved here in the United States or Canada. All I know is that they are now moving this product over into Israel and Palestine authorities. The other piece of news that came out is interesting. Stonegate Capital Partners announces publishing of a thematic report. The name of the report, Undervalued Growth Pharma Companies Amidst Healthcare Sector Decline. They tell us right here, the market intelligent report identifies a group of small cap healthcare companies that we believe represent small undervalued businesses with room to grow in the current biotech industry downturn. The report highlights standout companies including I2 Biopharma ticker AYTU that not only show strong revenue growth but also low enterprise value to sales ratio. So they've got new business coming in. They've got recognition by some group here, which has obviously done some vetting, some due diligence. So I'm confident that the company's got room to grow. The chart is hot. So with everything in place, I am sure we're gonna see a bounce off of this. Let's go take a look at that chart. Mamma mia, what a hot chart. Mwah. This is ticker AYTU, I2 Biopharma. And of course, we are looking at a six month, four hour view. Our high hit back in December of $4.88 when she was over the 200. She crushed that and hit this low at the beginning of May of $1.36. Now she has been waiting for this 200 to get close. And once it got close, we have what I call the directional intentional spike. It pierces the 200, but it doesn't intend to stay up there. It's just waving a flag up there telling you, I'm going to run when I get an opportunity. It starts and goes up and comes right back down to where it started from. Maybe higher, but never lower. So this was a perfect indicator. So now we just wait and watch. Well, right now it's happening and she's not even working hard. She just walked over the 200, but look at how excited she is about it. She had a nice jump from $1.74 up to $1.88. Now, right now she is over the 200. She is there. The 50 day SMA is about to cross the 200. That's gonna be a golden cross. That is one of the strongest technicals on the chart. You can normally expect a push on the price. Volume isn't anything to talk about, but we do have some pretty decent uh, oscillators here. They're light, but you can see that our PPO is pushing up just as is our MACD. Our RSI is pushing up. Nothing is great, but it is all happening. It is all going the right direction. 20 day, one hour view. Lots of sideways activity here all over that 200 day SMA. She's trying to push again. She tried here, she tried here. Is this one going to be successful? She is on her nine day SMA and all of the others are following suit. She had a lot of volume at the end of the day. 
Oscillators look excellent. You can see clearly now the PPO and the MACD are pushing up and our RSI as well. And that is now up at 61. Looking at our five day, five minute. So there's not a lot of potential to be seen on these shorter time frames. She had a jump from 164 to 188, stayed on top of the 200, did a rubber ball bounce. That means she fell up underneath the water and came back up on the surface as a rubber ball would do. And she is pushing away right now. She's getting some big bars. She had big bars over here too, but these were all pre-market. These are all during the market. Oscillators, they're all still pushing up. All of the oscillators and all the time frames say she is working her way up. And the four hour chart, you can definitely see we are right there at a breakout, folks. Right there. So she's got momentum. It'd be nice to get a piece of news, but everything is set up right now. Put AYTU on your watch list. Keep an eye out on this for tomorrow and the next day. It is there right now. We got a trifecta going here. All three stocks we've looked at come from the NASDAQ. And more importantly, all three stocks have hot, primed, atypical breakout charts that are ready to run. This is Golden Matrix Group, ticker GMGI. Now, as I said, she's got a hot chart. It's ready. It is set up. There's nothing to work for. We just need a catalyst. Well, we looked at this company a couple of times, I do believe it is. The first time we looked at it was a long time ago. I compared her to other gambling companies. And at that time, nobody was making any money. Well, they are now. GMGI just reported their most recent quarterly financials and they reported record revenues. They also had some big news come out on June 30th. They reinstated a deal that's gonna help them make more money. So everything looks hot including that chart. So GMGI, she finished today at $2.23 with about three and a quarter percent gains. Now they tell us down here that Golden Matrix Group is an established gaming technology company that develops and owns online gaming intellectual property and builds configurable and scalable white label gaming platforms for its international customers currently located primarily in the Asia Pacific regions. Now, when you talk about white label, you're talking about making a package, a product, and putting other companies' names on it. So they put all these slot machine games, sports betting games, poker games into one, and then they can sell that package to all these different people. And that's an easy way to make money. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <sighs> she had a little drop too. Remember folks, all the markets right now are dealing with a drought. There's not a lot of volume anywhere. So she dropped from 33,600 shares down to 32,800 shares. Not a big drop. Share structure for GMGI, not too bad. Looks like a 50-50 deal to me. Outstanding share count is about 36 million. Restricted shares, these are the shares the insiders own. Management, hedge funds, institutions. They got about 14 million which leaves us just about 14 million if these numbers are right. And 14 million in this sort of company isn't a bad deal at all. Looking at the financials for the company. Well, this is where the pudding's in the pie. You can see she is having some huge leaps year after year from 915,000 to 2.8 million to 5.2 million, that is doubling over and over. But then look what we do in 2022. That's like 600 times her revenues, going from 5.2 million to 36 million. Quarterly, they've been growing slowly. Eight, nine, nine and a half, 10, seven, 10, three, and their most recent one is over 11 million. So their revenues are growing and that's what you want with a company, especially a gambling company, hand over fist. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We've got two recent disclosures here. One is about the nomination of directors and the other one is about their most recent financial. So let's dive on into that news. So I've gone back here to the end of June. Golden Matrix and Meridian Bet sign amended and restated purchase agreement. Now, I do wanna share this one with you. They tell us here that the company and Meridian Bet Group 
have today announced that they have entered into an amended and restated purchase agreement to which GMGI has agreed to acquire the Meridian Bet Group and all related companies. Meridian Bet Group is one of Southeast Europe's leading business to consumer sports betting and gaming groups with headquarters in Malta, operating in multiple markets across Europe, Africa, and Latin America. Now they say once this deal is done, the assets are going to make the stock worth $3 at that time. Right now we are at $2.23. The other pieces of news, you've got a corporate update here. This is about their revenues and what they do is they break down each section of where they're making their money so you can see where they're making it. And as I said, they just reported their third quarter revenues exceeding $11 million. So everything is hot over here. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do, making every quarterly's revenues more than the one before, and they're making deals to keep those revenues coming in. Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's take a look at this atypical breakout chart for ticker GMGI. This is a four hour, six month view. Our low bubble is back at the end of December, $1.89. Then we had some excitement. She took off running for just under three weeks to $4.46 in January. Then we had a lot of volatility, most of it negative, bringing her way down here close to this low. She got down to $1.97. And off of that, she broke through the 200. Now it is way too steep for her to stay up there. She couldn't get any footing. She slipped and fell and she just tumbled downhill for a while. And right now she looks like she's ready to break out. She was underneath all of her SMAs, got over the 20, the 50, the 200 haul, and she is right there at $2.23 underneath the 200 day SMA at $2.25. Now the volume was light, but it's consistent. You can see it steady. And our oscillators are looking nice. We've had a crossover on our PPO today. We had a crossover on our MACD that just went over to signal line and we got a forest growing there. All those green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI has been pushing for the last six days, jumping from 38 up to 58. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour view. So she has predominantly been under the 200 all of this time. Off of that $2 low bubble, she bounced. She is now through her 200 day SMA on the one hour chart and she's floating nicely on the nine day. She did have a little bit of pullback at the end of the day, but it's right there in the middle of the bar. Perfect placement. All of these SMAs are turned up and coming towards the 200. We're going to have some golden crosses tomorrow, most likely. Osculators look great. PPO is pushing up to the moon. MACD is pushing up. RSI has had a little bit of pullback just because of that drop right there. Looking at our five day, five minute view. So she was basically going sideways for the last three days, the hard way, up and down, up and down. But then she bounced right here off of this 50, off the 50, not the 200. She bounced off the 50, then bounced off the 200 and launched herself. Now she's paying heed to the 20 day SMA and looks like she could come down and bounce off of the 20 again, but she is light. She's not near the 50 or the 200 haul or 200 day SMA. Oscillators, they're a little weak right now simply because of this pullback at the end of the day, but outside of that, everything looks really good. GMGI, she's making money. The money just becomes more and more every quarter. They're making deals to bring in more money. Now, right now they're over in the Asia Pacific area. I know they're in Ireland and the UK with a different type of thing. It is contest pay to play sort of thing. So they are in other countries with other sorts of business. But the bottom line is the chart is set up and they just had good news with record revenues. When else would be a good time to look at it? So let me ask you a question, folks. These atypical breakout charts, do they kind of all look the same to you? They should. They're easy to recognize. These are the ones that are most probable to break out and the ones that give us strong gains. Start searching for them yourself. Just bring up a penny scan anywhere from triple zero one to five dollars. I personally use double zero one to three dollars. Pull up your scan and then just start going through the charts, looking at them. And if you see one of those atypical breakout charts, 
Go through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. You've got yourself a hot penny stock. Folks, I love sharing this information with you, but of course, I don't give you everything. I only share enough information to get you interested. Be sure to do your own due diligence. Convince yourself they're worthy of investing in. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.